Thank you so much, Iman. Welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is the second session for Asia Pacific region in our uh, uh, Engage event. Uh, I'm very privileged to have with me today uh, three uh, very eminent banking luminaries in Asia Pacific. Uh, I have with me Mark Bantig, who is the head of digital at BDO Unibank. Uh, BDO is one of the largest banks in Philippines, has the largest distribution network in the country, and it is also one of the most awarded bank uh, in, in the region. Uh, Ramesh Lakshmi Narayanan, he is the group CIO of HDFC Bank. Uh, HDFC is the largest private sector bank in India, and it's uh, the third largest company in India, with, uh, which employs more than 120,000 uh, people. So that's a, that's a big number. And finally, we have Marek Hoverka. Uh, he's the founding member of FE Credit, and he's also a director with UBank, which is the neo bank that has been powered by VP Bank and FE Credit. And uh, Marek is a, uh, a very active within Vietnam's uh, banking uh, sector for more than a decade now. And it's a privilege for me to have all three of you as part of this panel discussion. Now, as you must have seen in the last session that we had uh, uh, with the, fire, the fireside chat that we had with Microsoft, I think that basically started the uh, discussion on the points of with the rise of tech firms and the rise of the new banks, uh, the, 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 the factor that differentiates a bank and a tech firm is rapidly going away. Uh, banks are becoming tech firms, tech firms are rapidly becoming banks. And all of this is happening because the end goal, the holy grail of banking transformation is who is going to win the war for the end customer engagement through customer experience. So let me start with you, Mark. Now, uh, if these are the key points and, and, in the, and the prevailing thought here is with the big tech, uh, uh, big tech and the digital disruptors, like for example, Grab in Asia Pacific or Paytm in India through their super apps and the customer experience, the, people, the questions that people ask is, uh, do these guys know more about the customer experience and the banking customer as compared to the banks? What is your take on it, Mark? I believe it's rightful for uh, banks to uh, be worried because when we're talking about uh, the, the word here is uh, operative word we're discussing here today is engagement. And the word engagement, uh, basically, if you boil it down, it's about owning the attention. It's owning the screen time. It's owning the face time, um, typically in front of a black mirror. Uh, the, the new form factor, which is mobile first. If so, it, big techs already own the engagement. They already have that. They, they, they're, they're very good uh, at what they do. They know how to, um, to prolong that engagement. And as we know, with uh, all the uh, revenue numbers around the world, it's uh, the longer the engagement, the more time you can sell the more time you can incite loyalty, uh, uh, connection, and therefore uh, trust. And once, we, once, once you get into the word of trust, that's where banks play. The, that's where um, financial, traditional financial institutions play. It's, it, it's, a, it's a question of trust. So um, banks are, are, are stuck in a very utilitarian uh, engagement model where it, it, it's, it's pure logic, it, uh, it's, it's transactional, it's utilitarian. While big tech knows, has gone beyond utility and has gone into the realm of magic, has gone into the realm of um, delight and, and extending the, the engagement time, prolonging it ever longer um, to, to, to serve more content. And in that content, um, marketing and the sales as well. So um, it's, I think, uh, what Microsoft uh, started off here, the, the, the discussion that Microsoft has, has started is, is very, um, it's, it's on point and, and big tech has a very strong um, uh, leverage when it comes to engagement. Thank you so much, Mark. And I think, I think that is something that we also saw in our report with IDC, right now, Philippines is one of the one of the territories within Asia Pacific which probably has the highest risk uh, in terms of the expected migration uh, of the customers from traditional banks to these digital digital disruptors, right? And I think the the, the key point that you mentioned is banks they know how the trust plays out, and perhaps the big uh, the big tech uh, as well as the new apps or the super apps 
they probably know the customer experience related bit so let me come to you marek now marek you probably are at that sweet spot that you already have the necessary trust in the vietnamese market uh, through your uh, backing uh, banks like vp bank and ifi credit you already have more than 50% market share when it comes to consumer lending space and now you also have the agility of a neo bank through u bank so mm. with that in mind are you worried at all look we are not worried because uh, you know u bank can only go up okay it's a green field it's a startup uh, it's a startup operation um and you know we uh, we at u bank or at fe credit you know we are not looking so closely at you know technology and uh, uh you know features and 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 similar okay we are always you know we're always looking at uh, understanding and addressing customer needs and really solving customer problems and what we see is that uh, is where before it was very difficult to solve customer problems in a digital way okay because the technology you know the hardware was not there the connectivity was not there the smartphone was not there today we see that uh, you know a lot of customer a lot of customer problems can be solved through a digital technology and you know that's why that's why we are um, we are following this uh, we are following this wave and we are riding this wave okay let me give you an example okay of course that uh, you know we know that uh, traditionally a good way of payment is a card you know is a bank okay. card for example you know but today you know maybe people don't even need card okay in many markets vietnam is the best example you know the government supports uh, payments through a mobile phone with everybody to everybody so you know this is a uh, um this is to me the addressing the customer need in a better more convenient and easier way okay because today for this particular example i don't need any piece of hardware in my pocket okay if i want to accept funds i don't need a you know physical pos terminal okay i just need two people with a smartphone which is today basically everybody and i can engage okay so this is a so this is a you know this is how we see this is how we see the issue so really we don't put the technology first but the technology for us is just the enabler you know it's an enabler because today it's logical that there is technology people like it people embrace it you know people carry a big piece of technology in their pocket and you know we are just uh, we're just enabling more function you know using the hardware and using parts of the software that uh, that people already carry in their pockets absolutely and i think that's a very important point marek that you are orchestrating around your customers need rather than trying to offer the similar products with just a different form factor and 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 with with that in with that in mind so ramesh when i come to you uh, hdfc bank is a goliath in in india and in last whatever two and uh, two to three decade, decades you have actually set standards in terms of what a customer in indian uh, uh, in indian banking customer come has come to expect uh, from different banks now with all of this discussion where does where does that put your thinking towards does that unsettle you at all no well, i think it's uh, see whether it's the vietnam or philippines market or the india market i think the, the underlying uh, you know ecosystem is is playing out in a very very uh, similar way of course you know the indian uh, market has been slightly ahead because of the the explosion that happened with upi and and probably you know everybody knows today uh the way the the you know upi ecosystem has evolved and and the and the way the customer experience with that has changed right so uh, you spoke about some of the uh, the fintechs like paytm uh, gpay which are very very strongly embedded phone pay kind of uh, who are actually kind of uh, at the forefront of the of owning the experience uh and then there are banks like you know the hdfc bank the icici bank and some of the larger banks which are which are kind of jostling for that for that for that space it's a very interesting kind of play out that's happening simply because uh, uh, you know uh, some of these banks were digitized to some extent i would say they weren't kind of coming off pure legacy wheels so to say but at the same time the game has been very uh, you know dramatically changed especially with with upi coming in and what i see is, is is two or three things that are playing out in this market one like you said how do uh, who will finally uh, get the experience uh, the the share of the experience it's going to be very very critical like uh, mark mentioned it is going to be equally important in a play in in a, in a market like india 
So I do see the banks playing out and trying to grab that space. See, there is no choice. The la- some of them would do, some of them may not be able to do. It's just a matter of how do you morph yourself in, in to be able to put that experience in front. Uh, and some of us have started reacting. You would see uh, in the last uh, you know uh, an year or so, there's a lot of focus on new uh, creating Absolutely. a technology capability f- uh, from that perspective. And secondly, I also think the regulatory aspect will play out very differently in India. Uh, so, so while banks jostle to become uh, themselves uh, from a digital customer experience perspective, they try to get into that space. I also think the big techs will will also have to kind of look at where the regulatory angle comes in because the, the pace of innovation has been huge. And that's also creating uh, kind of, uh, you know, I would say fissures and frictions uh, at the scenes, you know. So I think it's a very interesting play out. Uh, I think there will be both sides will have their winners to, to my mind. Uh, and there will uh, finally, I think the customer experience will win. I think it's all good for the customer from that perspective. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's that's where I see. I think it's it's kind of a, a market that's going to go both sides. The, the big techs will will learn to be a little bit more, uh, you know, from a regulatory frame perspective. And banks like us would learn how to kind of get into digital customer experience better, uh, as as good as big tech. So it's a very interesting play out from that perspective. Perfect. And uh, that makes sense. And that's a very interesting point, uh, Ramesh, because. Uh, while everyone has been talking about uh, the customer experience being provided by the digital disruptors, no one is really talking about whether do they have the necessary wherewithal to withstand the regulatory scrutiny or uh, the relationship with the central bank or the kind of jurisprudence that they need to have. Because the customer experience and these two things may not necessarily be going in similar direction in many of the use cases. And that's a very interesting point. So Ramesh, continuing that particular thought, uh, when you you just referred to that, that in the uh, last uh, two to three or five years, uh, all the major banks within India, including HDFC, has gone through several challenges, several highs and lows. What would be for, for a bank, which is perhaps just starting their digital transformation or thinking about taking that next step, are there any hard lessons that you would like to share from, from your own experience? No, I think there are a lot of hard lessons, uh, uh, Abhijit, because uh, look, the biggest uh, problem is the scale and the size. See, what uh, what also happens, I think there are multiple set of problems uh, that you see. Some of the small banks have a different set of problems. Some of the payment banks have a different problem. In India, the ecosystem is slightly more, as you know, it's more uh, segmented. So we have, the, we have the small finance banks, so the payment banks, so the PSU banks. And then you have the private sector banks. I'm not kind of talking about foreign banks because their their presence is quite limited in that sense. You know, in that you know, while their presence is there, but they're not made uh, drastic inroads in that sense. So given that, I think uh, some of the banks that have scaled up, uh, you know, which are large scale out banks, private sector banks, which have had um, banks like us who've had huge success, you know, in the last 25 years. What we are also seeing is that uh, the the uh, technology can also be a, a problem creator at the scale at which we work. We are seeing scales of big tech today in India. Uh, and just as an example, I mean, we're probably uh, doing, you know, uh, uh, almost about 3 billion transactions a day on the UPI system. That's like a crazy number, right? If anybody has to kind of look at that kind of a number, uh, you know, it's crazy. And, and banks like us, probably 8, 10% of that share. So you can imagine the kind of transaction volumes that's, that's really coming through. And what has happened traditionally is most of the banks have always been in a in a buy technology. The traditional banks have been in the buy technology and and kind of implement kind of a mode, uh, and and they're coming off uh, technologies that are probably ten years behind in that sense. You know, which is largely you know monolithic databases, uh, JVM led technology platforms, uh, and you know suddenly when the game has been changed in the transaction volume and scale perspective. Uh, and how do you make that change? You know you have to make that change, but you know making that change is not that easy uh, because you're you're kind of running uh, literally or you're flying the plane and flying that uh, 380 jumbo and you're changing the engine in that sense, right? So I think we, we are looking at very different strategies. So the, I think the difficult part is if you're starting from zero, it's very easy. I mean today you can go container ready, cloud native, container ready, microservices, active, active, pretty much done deal. I mean there is no no brainers, right? But imagine when you have you know millions and billions of customers on one side on the existing platform, just transitioning them and putting them on the system is not so easy. And that's the toughest challenge, if you ask me. And what strategies these banks will adapt? I think there will be two or three breakout uh, uh, banks which will which will have that winning strategy. And I think that will decide which of those will will compete in the league table with the big techs. As 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 I said, the space is going to be more and more interesting to watch over the next two two to three years. So. 
So that's the biggest challenge if you ask me. How do you make that change? It's not about making the change. It's how do you make the change? Understood. And I think I think having the scale, the kind of scale that you have, uh, it it makes it all that more difficult because what whatever you are doing is for to improve customer experience. But how you are doing it, if it is going to disrupt the customer experience for your existing ones, then it becomes a very tough act and a tough balance to maintain. Uh, and then, of course, there is no absolute silver bullet when it comes to how to go about it. As you mentioned, different strategies will evolve, and everyone needs to play to their strengths. Look at the the key uh, challenges that they need to look at. Now, that hindsight is a beautiful thing, right? And 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 in your experience, Mark, what are what are certain hard lessons that you can probably share with uh, the the rest of the panel? Well, I, I think I can I can take a jump off point to exactly what Ramesh just said there. Um, some hard lessons and 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 things that hindsight can teach us would be, uh, let's say, uh, most banks, especially larger banks, that that don't have the luxury of starting clean, starting fresh, uh, will have certain legacy systems that need to be uh, given an elixir of life by new technologies. Uh, let's say Backbase, for example, um, uh, as, as, as a new spiffy new front end. Uh, but uh, the need to be able to make sure end-to-end works, uh, not just, you know, it, it's one thing to get uh, 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 the latest uh, front, end te- front end technology such as, such as um, a Backbase, but to make sure um, they work seamlessly and they work well with with various back end uh, systems each of each of which have their own uh diff- they're in different stages of modernization uh the various components of of the back end systems all are coming into their own um modernization uh program so that's one thing is to see to see things omnisciently to see things um, all pieces moving and somehow making it all uh come together Beautifully, I think of a drummer who who drums off beat. You know, um, sometimes it, it, sometimes it it may sound it it the sound sounds off beat at times, but it somehow it needs to come together really well on the sixteenth on the sixteenth beat magically. If if it's not managed uh, holistically, uh, it's going to be painful, really painful. So that's one of the first um, hard lessons and hindsight. Um, uh, uh the lessons that that we that we did uh thankfully uh thank you abhijit uh, backbase was able to to really help us uh navigate that uh a little bit more prudently uh than uh you know uh, t- so that uh, to minimize anything on un- anything unforeseen uh, the second lesson that i would say would be um making hard decisions of prioritization uh each business unit in, in, in most banks right now feel the burning need to modernize. Um, so, so everything is suddenly urgent. But when everyone's uh, modernization path is urgent, then who is urgent? Who is really to be prioritized? So it's really uh, deciding what, what will move the needle and what what will re, what really needs to be prioritized and then number 3 the third lesson that i think um we learned is uh connecting this back to the first thing which is microsoft which is as big techs come in uh big tech is used to um uh boosting usage revenue can be can be uh foregone most most tech startups didn't realize revenue until year 10 while banks banks run on revenue, you don't make your targets. You know you might not have a job, so um, so it's really marrying this whole uh, usage now. Uh, sometimes usage comes at a, a very painful cost because uh, uh, fees and 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 free engagement comes at a cost, right? Versus the competitor. So really, really finding uh, a good balance between the traditional revenue model versus uh, a usage-based uh, stickiness model as well. That makes sense. And I do see a pattern there from what Ramesh mentioned, what you're mentioning, I think. And your analogy was pretty musical, I must say. It's basically having an ability to conduct that orchestra wherein you are, you are you want to have everything in sync. 
and and then finally uh, the the point around how do you cap how do you prioritize your decisions because if everything is priority then perhaps nothing is and when you are competing against very well funded and hugely capitalized big for big tech firms or the neo banks then in that case it becomes uh, probably not a level paying field in the short term but i think the long term will will tell us uh, which of those things are sustainable with with respect to you marek do you do you think i mean uh, for for both hdfc and for bdo they do have to take care of what is already in place whereas in your case with ubank being a neo bank does that really uh, that part, not having that particular challenge does that really uh, sort of release your bandwidth in terms of making you a successful but are there any other hard lessons that you can share no, no very very significantly very significantly and i totally agree with what ramesh said that uh, you know today if you start a green field you know your life uh, your life is not very difficult okay and uh, you know i was a strategic consultant before so i was also involved in some you know banks restructuring and dealing with legacy systems you know dealing with a database full of active customers and what to do with it and uh, you know ramesh used the example uh, you know flying a boeing and changing an engine you know in germany they say uh, you know changing the engine in the car when you are driving full speed on the highway okay which is uh, which is the same and yes you know i totally agree that today the life has been um, the, the life has been much easier um you know for the startups and also um you know i would slightly disagree with the thing that uh, you know budget is so important because today you know it is it is very easy to to build a new bank even with a full functions and with a with full every uh, you know with a full functionality and with a full product suite on a relatively you know limited budget or at least if we compare the situation 5 years ago or 10 years ago then it's um, then it's much easier and also uh, you know thanks to the companies like backbase you know that provide uh, you know full support uh, scalable system everything in the cloud and you know there are also core banking systems like this then it also a little bit removes um the the requirements to be very technological you know you bank we are you know what you would call today a digital bank you know we are fully in the cloud uh, you know no branches uh, no branches etc but you know we are not uh, we are not a very technological company because a lot of the technology not all but a lot of the technology is outsourced you know to a to a company like yours and then you know what is left for us is really what we can do okay which is uh, which is delivering the value for the for the customer you know creating products and yes of course there is an aspect of the delivery through the digital channel and you know through the mobile app which is a new challenge for the bankers but generally you know the the hardcore technological uh, requirements and technological demands they have been already taken away quite significantly so oh, makes sense and I, th- i think that's a that's a that's a key point right if you are unburdened uh with respect to let's say the decisions on let's say hosting or you are unburdened to decisions with respect to whether we need to build something from the scratch rather than taking it off the shelf and then rather focus our energies on what is most important is the customer experience and the end customer that is a definite strategy which which we we have also seen with a lot of clients that we are working with in the region and globally where they find it useful thanks for that call out and i think all of these inputs are pretty important for anyone who is in the midst of their journey and they they know that these are the kind of challenges they will expect if they haven't already encountered it and they also gives them a bit of peace of mind in terms of how different banks who are already ahead in terms of this journey are looking at it now that we looked at the challenges part of it i think we should we must always take a, a step back and try and find those uh, uh, highs that we should we are we are proud of because those are also the points of inspiration because there is there is light at the end of the tunnel and there is something to cheer about and to celebrate for someone who is going to take that journey marek would you like to share any of your uh, uh, achievements that you are extremely proud of as part of u bank in the last uh, since your inception um you know yes yes and um, you know there are a few things where we are happy that uh, um you know really using technology we were able to deliver a new solutions and really really a solutions that um um uh, that are that are valuable and that are really valued for the customer you know i can mention in u bank uh, as you know we are offering very high interest rate on the normal spending account okay 
That, and, you know, that is something that uh, basically without a strong digital technology is impossible, okay? Because uh, in the environment of Vietnam, where, as you know, um, it is prohibited to, um, uh, to accrue high interest on the current account. So what we do that, you know, we automatically move all the money to, to a term deposit. And then when customer needs to do a withdrawal, we move the money back. We split it in a very small part, you know, to follow the Vietnamese legislation. So, you know, um, in order in order to deliver value to the customer and the value is uh, giving him uh, 10 times higher interest rate on the spending account than any bank in Vietnam, which is a, which is a real, you know, sensible advantage. You know, this is something which is enabled fully only through digital technologies. It is enabled only through the fact that we are able to do hundreds, if not thousands of operations on the client account every month. Can you do it? Can you, can you do the same in a non-digital environment? Yes, but then you would probably have to spend two hours every day doing just banking. Okay, but now we have the technology and we can offer this advantage actually free of charge because the technology it's so automated that it doesn't cost anything. So this is this to me is one thing where you know the technology is really is really in the background. You know, it is not in the foreground, but this is a technology that in the background wor works very clearly for the benefit of our customers. And you know, this is something uh, this is something that I'm very proud about. And the other thing is, uh, I would mention, uh, for example, you know, offering uh, offering uh, salary advance right in the mobile app. Okay, and again, you know, we know that today, if customer needs a hundred, few hundred dollars before salary, typically they have to use one of the um, one of the offers of the payday loans with extraorbitant prices. Again, through our technology. We can disburse and we can underwrite the loan very easily, very quickly, very cheaply. And this is also the advantage that we are passing on the customer. So our customer can have a can have a payday loan for a, for a fraction of the price that the normal you know payday payday lenders are offering, and even even to our uh, not to our customers, but even to the employees of our organizations, of which we have uh, more than sixteen thousand. This, uh, this, um, uh, this salary advance is, is completely for free. So this is something that we even offer to our customers as a, as a, retention, as a retention model and as a you know, expression of our gratitude for, for our work. So this is, so, this, so really this value delivery and this uh, additional value that we are able to offer to the customer at no extra cost really makes me proud. This is, this is really inspiring to hear because uh, here you're looking at technology as enabler technology which is making itself making its presence felt without really being seen anywhere in the foreground right and it is the enabler in the enablement part that leads you to a, your differentiation in the market so that's look, that, that's great yeah and look this is if i may add this is very important for us because you know i'm often repeating to the people no customer has ever come to the bank and said i want a digital account okay i want to bank only with a digital bank okay I, at least I have never heard such a case. Okay, customer wants cheaper price, you know, quicker, quicker disbursed loan, and you know, um, other advantages or you know, uh, free. So you know, for us, really, the technology, the technology must be in the background, and the technology must work on the benefit of the customer, but in my, in our mind, without bothering the customer too much. Yeah, I think that that underscores the need to. I mean, you're essentially improving the customer experience, and they're oh. getting the benefit of it without explicitly calling it as "oh, it was the digital experience." It is so blended, well blended in. So kudos on that, Mark. Any uh, success stories you would like to share? Yeah, um, when I first joined the bank, and this was at the at the onset of the pandemic of the lockdowns. Um, we had to revamp our uh, digital banking platform immediately. Uh, this was the start of our engagement with Backbase. Uh, at first, um, knowing the, the the stories in the other banks in the Philippines as my benchmark, I said, two years. This is going to take two years. And it's going to be a very painful two years. Lo and behold, um, this is the biggest, I guess, uh, it's the fastest I've ever seen it uh, happen for a bank, especially for any bank in the Philippines, and especially for a bank of our size. Um, we, we, we launched a production in six months from 
the beginning of the project to uh, going to production. Uh, that may sound like uh, uh, a weak headline, um, but that basically encompasses uh, a lot of minor wins that 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 went to it. One, uh, it shows that the board was willing to afford us anything to cut through red tape and other other processes. Number two, uh, resources. Number three. Uh, Backbase provided the product that will make it happen and the support that we needed to um, get our back-end architecture up to speed. Um, number five, we are the. This is the first project we are, which we were able to execute in agile, in in a sprint methodology. Everything else prior to this was waterfall, and the whole point of getting. The uh, getting the, the the platform out to public in uh, to, to production in in six months is is the whole essence of it is get out fast get it out fast uh, MVP get it to beta get feedback and iterate really quick and from there um, no one will really get the customer experience right on the first go although we have an idea of what it should be or what it could be based on our maybe human centered design. Uh, gathering data gathering, but the whole point of is getting it out fast and iterating quickly. The fact that we were able to launch something that fast, and that is testament to how fast we can iterate. Uh, I know we're on a path uh, that might uh, that might just uh, put 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 a dent in what uh, Microsoft just said uh, previously. That that I think banks can can fight. Through this, uh, through this moderate digital digitization in, in the world, so that 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 is my um, that's a success story that I'd like to um, to share to highlight. We're, we're very glad to be part of that particular journey with you, uh, Mark. Uh, and I think the keyword here is the agility, right? The key keyword here is probably a, perhaps uh, taking a step away from maybe uh, technology or the product that enables you, but it's also the the change in the mindset and the change management overall. That yes. Uh, you you mentioned that uh, you started that at the height of the COVID and probably COVID was one of the biggest eye openers for all of us. It's like a three year worth of digital transformation being done in half of that time, uh, despite or rather probably because of COVID that a lot of the earlier notions have been uh, uh, sort of blown to smithereens. So so with that in mind, R Ramesh, what would your um, how would you inspire someone who's about to take that journey? It's a challenging thing. It's a painful thing. It's a complex thing. But what are the success things, uh, success uh, stories that uh, uh, the 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 people can look forward to? Well, I think uh, for us, it's been a very uh, uh, difficult one year, and and you know that uh, because of the kind of COVID and the regulatory, uh, you know, uh, lens on us and all of that stuff. But I think uh, you know I'm not going to look at individual project milestones or or technology you know solutions as success stories. I think what has happened dramatically with us is the cultural mind shift. I think to me that's been the biggest success story more than more than anything else because for a bank that's doing transition, see sometimes large legacy organizations uh, get into a mindset that look we are the best. You know, uh, we know everything, uh, and 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 that kind of you know, they're so oblivious of the the kind of world that's that's outside. Uh, they are not uh, willing to kind of change, right? And and that and that cultural aspect is the most I would say difficult part, and that's why you would find historically a lot of large legacy organizations have not been able to transform, and and it it kind of uh, keeps going back. And if you go back and see some of them who have done this successfully, are the ones who realize at their peak that you know you need to change. Uh, so I think to me that has been the biggest success story in last one year. So what's HDFC Bank done differently? I mean, if you come in today, uh, cloud is is not no longer a tab. I mean, you'd come in here uh, a year and a half back and say, oh no, we can't. You know, we, security this and that and all of that stuff. Today, oh, no. you come in. The first question is, is your solution cloud native? Is it container? Uh, you know, ready? I mean, otherwise we would not even look at it. So that's a fundamentally big shift, right? Uh, similarly, you know, the whole thought process around agility. I mean, today people are willing to experiment, you know, sprint cycles, agile development, don't ask. Otherwise, 
large organizations will always come with saying oh when is the delivery happening i mean i don't care waterfall and you know one project plan and that's what would happen but today people are ready to come across multiple teams create pod structures uh, you know thrash out the problem in a very different way uh, and then kind of uh, run very short sprint cycles it's a very different kind of mindset for a large organization to adopt that you know it's easy to say in a short term because you know if you're a small if you're a startup then fine day zero you know scrums will happen you know uh, you know jira confluence and and you know other pipeline items would be pretty much available day zero item but when you're running a large organization and start telling people that tomorrow you will not write brd but you will write put uh, epic and uh, stories which is a, which is a very different science uh, those kind of cultural changes where i think uh, we have taken phenomenal uh, journey obviously from that we have had a lot of uh, change thought process and you know that we uh, the factory in bangalore is a very interesting example where we are working That's with right. you very closely uh, to kind of you know look at the next level of the backpace implementation uh, we've created a factory in, in mumbai which is kind of looking at hollowing of the core which i call the very interesting strategy of getting into uh, a very different uh, core banking strategy and i'm not talking about just like uh, mark mentioned uh, earlier Uh, the thought of moving from legacies is a, is a very different thought process the back end has to be changed you can't just do the front end change so in fact i would say my 70% of my current energy is on the back end change uh, uh, in that sense you know because the core has to step up i mean it is not about uh, providing the user experience in the front end that's that's for sure it's required so i think those are the areas so the creation of the factories the adoption of cloud uh, the uh, adoption of agile uh, methodologies Uh, the kind of talent that is coming into the bank now uh, you are probably aware of that as well you would have seen some interaction we are kind of very open about who what the kind of people that coming you don't need to be a banker to come into the bank or you don't need to be a project manager to be in technology it's a very different ball game today you know you're looking for right. architects you're looking for devops you're looking for sre uh, you know those are very different skills that we are we are coming with right so i think fundamentally that is the most positive aspect of uh, of of the last one year journey abhijit in, in terms of what what's happened at at least with hdfc bank in that sense i i think that you cannot really um, uh, uh, what do you say overestimate the importance of change management and the cultural mindset and ability to sort of think out of the box and i think i think you rightly and very candidly you shared uh, the the uh, the insights in there so let me come to my final question right i mean we we all of us do agree that yes this is a clear um, challenge a clear opportunity it is not simple it is going to be complex it is going to be painful and there is no silver bullet now if we try and take all of that into consideration and we try and do a bit of crystal ball gazing who do you think uh, ramesh will come on on top in 2022 2023 in terms of winning this war for customer engagement so i think it's a question that's quite quite uh, i would say complicated in that sense there's no straight answer in that sense uh, and some of it we discussed at the part of our earlier uh, uh, questions in that sense right i mean earlier conversation uh see two ways to look at it uh, uh, my 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 take on this that look uh, like uh, uh, marek said at some point of time you can't just have banking only from a, from a experience and digital perspective yes it is very very important but fundamentally the trust the the return on my, uh, asset the return on the financial these are very critical elements as well that's why banking products are there where they are right at the end of the day uh, but having said that uh, the 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 digital part of it is also critical so what i'm seeing is a very very clear play out that like you said the digital uh, the, the big techs the, the fintechs are wanting to play that game in from a customer experience and ownership of the real estate on the on the smartphone uh, being the single most point and of course usage of the analytics as the second lever actually if you ask me that fundamentally if you ask me two very very critical levers out here and of course the third is the, is the create share product creation at the back end and the, the power of the product that you create so there are three f- fundamental elements on which this battle will be fought the way i see is that uh, banks hold one lever which is the product creation I, you can't take it away whatever you try and do it's it's going to be with the banking industry and, and the minute you try the the the, the other uh, uh, big techs and fintechs try to do that they will get regulated so that problem is exactly. going to come in yeah. okay. the uh, but at the same time for us how do we get to the other uh, the other lever of being able to use own the front end customer experience which is where you know partnerships with 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 uh, you know uh, with uh, you know firms like yours 
uh, getting deeper into the tech, getting deeper into, into creating tech IP is very critical for banks. So that's how the banks will play out. And then comes the middle layer, which is the data layer, which is a very, very interesting point because I, I do see that again as a split between down the line because the front end data, the geo positions, the behavioral data, uh, some of that would obviously going to come from the from the big techs. But the financial data, the credit part of it, you know, the 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 actual financial behavior again will be owned from the from the bank side. Uh, so the way I see that, you know, in some areas you will find that both this will be very very hit, uh, a very very fierce competition. I think that finally there will be four or five or maybe six breakout players from either sides. Uh, and the way I think this will happen, some of us will transform ourselves digitally into 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 a into a tech tech enabled firm offering a very trusted financial product. I also see some of the some of the big tech fintech players coming in and saying, okay, let's do uh, you know the front end so well that we we also provide a back end in, in partnership with the banks, and there will be a symbiotic partnership three four years down the line. I don't think there's going to be a one versus the other. There will be places where there will be competition. But in a lot of places, there will also be collaboration. So, but my own take is that it probably will finally the space would be for for the top six, seven, you know, and you will find a lot of the other players not being able to because finally the scale and the profitability and and the uh, the value has to be on the table. So that's how I look at it. It's it's a bit of a, a I would say a, a, a 50 50 uh, in that sense, and and may the best man win. Uh, that's how we're going to look at the story. You know, so. so so jury is still out with Ramesh on this one, but those are pretty interesting points. I mean, of course you will compete, of course you will collaborate. The right answer probably lies somewhere uh, uh, somewhere in between, and I think uh, that's something to look forward to. Mark, what do you think? What is your verdict for the next two years? Uh, for someone who follows and an advocate of uh, decentralized finance, crypto, I'm I will see it in a similar fashion. There are always uh, people who are pushing for the bulls, and there'll be uh, loud loudspeakers on the bears. Um, I think in the next two years, there's going to be uh, uh, people are going to come down from the top and from the bottom into a fatter middle. If we're talking about a horizon of the next two years, um, uh, jumping off from what uh, Ramesh said, which is um, uh, the tech companies are going to feel the pain of uh, regulatory oversight, um, and and again, like, and like and like Ramesh said, that the, the product creation, um, while traditional financial institutions will feel that uh, customer experience isn't just uh, making things quick, uh, fewer clicks. Or, or you know, uh, these these vanity vanity no, um, metrics that we're talking about uh, when when we look at the dashboard of our Google Analytics or our Firebases, right? It's really about solving pain points, solving problems, offering value. Um, banks, like Ramesh said, will start to need to dabble into acquiring tech. Um, uh, really looking at itself as and 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 come to the reality that we're not a tech company. Uh, therefore, we and 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 I don't think we will ever be. We might need to put up a subsidiary that starts fresh. Um, so, in terms of winners and losers, I think the two-year horizon is too short. But definitely, you're going to see um, uh, tech coming down and, and banks coming up into this uh, wider middle playing field. And then after the next two to three years, then you'll see people start pulling, pulling ahead of the, uh, pulling ahead of the pack, especially the ones that, that know how to take uh, uh, calculated, but bigger risks, uh, the big strategic plays, such as like what I mentioned, maybe off shooting a, a different entity altogether. They can start fresh because most large institutions as Ramesh, uh, and I, like what Ramesh said earlier, I, I was like, wow, he, he's he's talking as if he had a, a spyglass as what's going on in, inside BDO. Uh, it, it, it's the it's legacy systems and uh, uh, changing, uh, just like what Marek said, changing a car, uh, the engine of a car while at full speed. It, that's the biggest problem. So if, it, if, if financial institutions wants to keep up or wants to keep abreast, while taking advantage of the fact that uh, tech, big tech is going to feel um, the pain of regulation, uh, I think it should make a, a big uh, strategic step into uh, uh, something 
outside of what it's uh, currently, uh, what's constraining it. That's it. Interesting. Interesting, Mark. And how about you, Marek? Um, it is a difficult question, okay? And, uh, you know, I'm sure that there is a... Um, uh, there is more ways of, of development and there is more ways of, uh, of, uh, of attacking the market. Um, I can only speak, uh, you know, from the, from, the, from the professional standpoint on behalf of Eubank. And, you know, our, uh, as you know, our tech, as you perhaps know, our tagline is bank less, get more. Okay. So, um, you know, we are willing to, we are willing to give and support uh, you know, the tech companies in, you know, uh, giving a lot of the screen time and giving a lot of the engagement to the customer. And, you know, the position of Ubank is rather being, being the power behind, okay? Look, in a practical example, we are totally not against and we are actually cooperating with, uh, with Grab and other players. So it is perfectly okay that, you know, people spend a lot of time in the Grab app choosing food, you know, choosing products, uh, setting different functionalities, but we as a bank, we want to be behind and we can provide the payment in a fully automated way. And also later on, that's what we are doing today, providing the funding or even providing options for BNPL, buy now, pay later for the customer. So, you know, this is a, this is a model that we, are, that we are trying to pursue. So, you know, from the perspective of Ubank and a Ubank customer, you know, we would be happy if the bank works for you maybe even without you knowing it, or maybe even without you engaging with the app too much. Because look, in a practical experience, if you are a Ubank customer, you know, you can link the Ubank payment option with all the Grabs, Ubers, uh, Lazadas, and, and, you know, other companies of the world. Uh, you know, you can take a loan in, a, in literally in a three clicks, but then, you know, the loan will be automatically repaid. Your bills will be paid. and if your money, if your salary comes to the Ubank account, it will be fully automatically invested at an interest rate that is very convenient for you. And if you want to make a transfer, you can make transfers to WhatsApp. So you can identify your contact in a WhatsApp and, and you know, WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp, will launch, uh, WhatsApp will launch a transaction. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, being true to the tagline bank class. You know, we want to be the power behind and, you know, we really don't have a strategy to push ourselves, you know, in front of the eyes of the of the uh, in front of the eyes of the uh, of the customer. Because again, you know, if I can say as a joke, you know, if you ask any customer how much banking would you like to get, how much interaction would you like with a bank, I really don't have a customer who would say as much as possible. You know, I rather know the customer who would say, oh, please, as little as possible and as simply as possible. And this is kind of, uh, you know, this is kind of the philosophy that we are trying to pursue at Ubank. No, point taken, point taken. I think, I think one, whether there may or may not be a clear winner in terms of big tech slash neo banks versus the traditional banks, I think the biggest winner is going to be the customer because his the customer experience is only going to improve the way uh, we are looking at these predictions. So thank you so much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure uh, uh, having you all here and having these insightful uh, discussion and I think there are a lot of takeaways and we appreciate the time you've spent with us. Uh, this brings us to the close of our Asia Pacific session uh, within our uh, Engage event and if you would like to continue uh, the conversation with Backbase just scan the QR code you see uh, in the screen showing up or you can visit us at backbase.com. Thank you everyone. Have a good day.